Since we are talking in this section about uh, ultrasonic reference blocks, uh, they are used for uh, calibration. So uh, we should absolutely talk about the calibration methods first. Calibration refers to uh, the act of evaluating and uh, adjusting the precision and accuracy of measurement equipment. In ultrasonic testing, several forms of calibration must occur. First, the electronics of the equipment must be calibrated to ensure that they are performing as designed. This operation is usually performed by the equipment manufacturer and will not be discussed further in this lecture. It is also usually necessary for the operator to perform a user calibration of the equipment. This user calibration is necessary because most ultrasonic equipment can be uh, configured for use in large variety of applications. The user must calibrate the system uh, which includes the equipment settings, the transducers, and the test setup to validate that uh, the desired level of precision and accuracy are achieved. The term calibration standard is usually only used when uh, an absolute value is measured and in many cases the standards are traceable back to standards at uh, the National Authority of uh, Standardization. So uh, before we can start to use an angle probe we need to find, to find out something about it. For instance, where is the sound coming out of the perspex show? It is the angle that is supposed to be, has the angle changed since it was last used? So we must check the probe before uh, we can calibrate the time base to enable its use. There are also a number of other performance checks uh, which should be carried out at specific intervals. So first, uh, let's start by finding the probe index, the point at which the center of the beam leaves the probe and enters uh, the test material is called the probe index or the emission point. It should be marked on each side of the probe and checked regularly. And to find the probe index, as you can see on this animation, we have to place the probe uh, on the V1 block and obtain the echo from the 100 mm radius and establish more than 50% full screen height using the gain control. We have to maximize the echo by moving the probe backward and forward and mark a line on each side of the probe directly above the slot which indicate the center of the 100 mm radius. And that will be uh, the probe index where the axis of the beam leaves the perspex show. Now let's see how we can check the angle of the probe for 45 and 60 degrees. We have to place the probe on the V1 block approximately adjacent to where the appropriate angle is inscribed and directed at the plastic insert. As you can see on the animation, then we have to obtain the signal on the screen from the plastic insert and maximize it by moving the probe backward and forward. And we have uh, finally to find the position where the probe index coincides with the angle indicated on the side of the V1 block and this will be the angle of the probe. The procedure um, can be uh, repeated for 70 degree but reflecting the energy from the plastic answer radius is uh, unreliable. Therefore, we suggest to use uh, the 1.5 millimeter hole as a target. Now we'll see the calibration of shear waves for range with the V1 block. By range in angle probe testing we mean the distance a reflector is from uh, the probe index. It is possible on some flow detectors to calibrate the time base to 100 mm range from the V1 block. However, this involves delaying the signal by 100 mm and not uh, all equipment can do this. So. Uh, the appropriate scale expansion setting. So we, we will uh, confine ourselves to calibrating for 200 mm full screen width. 
So first we have to place the probe on the V1 block and obtain the boundary echoes from uh, the 100 millimeter radius then establish this signal to more than 50 percent height using the game control and further maximize the echo by moving the probe backwards and forwards then we have to win uh, in or out the scale expansion range control to establish second boundary echo at 200 millimeter and then we place the signal from the 100 millimeter at 5 which is half scale on the time base and uh, the one from 200 millimeter at 10 which is the full scale using the delay and range controls the time base is calibrated for 200 mm longer range can be uh, captured for eight multiples of 100 millimeter however the v1 block is bulky not convenient for site work and it is not always possible to calibrate for 100 millimeters, so we tend to use the V2 block. The V2 block is a uh, most convenient calibration block for uh, to use with angle probes. It has two arcs at 25 and 50 millimeter. So let's see the calibration for 100 mm first. We place the probe on the uh, on the block and point it at 25 millimeter arc the, uh, we adjust the delay and range controls until uh, we have two signals on the screen the first will represent 25 and the second will represent 100 mm we maximize the signals by sliding the probe forward and backward and we should adjust the range and the light until the first echo comes a quarter of the way across the screen at 2.5 and the second echo comes at the extreme edge of the screen. The time base now represents 100 mm and check it by turning the probe round and pointing it at uh, the 50 uh, mm arc. If you have calibrated correctly, the signal uh, when maximized will come exactly uh, in the middle of the screen at 5. Now let's see the calibration of shear wave uh, for 200 mm on the V2 block. So we point the probe uh, at the 50 mm arc on the V2 block and we obtain three echoes on the screen. This represents 50, uh, 125 and 200 mm. We have to maximize this signal by sliding the probe forward and backward and then we have to adjust the range and the delay until the first signal comes a quarter of the way across the screen at 2.5 and the third echo comes at the extreme edge of the screen at 10. For 250mm calibration um, we have to point the probe at the 25 millimeter radius arc on the V2 block and adjust the set until uh, we get four echoes. This represents 25, 100, 175 and 250 mm. We have to maximize the signal uh, by sliding the probe forward and backward and we have to adjust the range and the light until the first echo comes on one tenth of the way across the screen at one and the fourth echo comes out at the extreme edge of the screen at 10. Then maybe we have to check on the V1 block on 100 millimeter arc. We should get uh, one echo, 4 over 10 across the screen and other one 8 over 10 across the screen.